to another live where I take your questions that you sent in the comment section, either on YouTube or Instagram, and I answer them for your benefit, where you can actually then, you know, uh, kind of like uh, benefit from actual real advice. Now, just a quick one. If it's super important or super urgent, don't wait for the live. Uh, you know, send your question across uh, on WhatsApp and then work with me, right? So I've got a bunch of questions I'm going to go through. However, uh, it's not just questions that I'm going to be answering today. What I want to also do is I want to go through a, a list of off-plan projects, okay? Uh, just quick advice, okay? I'm not giving you the complete pros, cons, analysis, recommendations, but just give you like quick advice on each simple project. Maybe not even advice, but give you enough information for you to get some food for thought to start thinking across them. Okay, guys, I've done a very good podcast. If you've missed out and you've not seen this, specifically for investors who are looking to move to Dubai on how to set up a company in Dubai. Have a look at that. And then in the middle, I'm going to take some questions as well. Okay, let's do... So don't don't worry. Hey, Eamon. Hey, Oh, guys, thank you very much for everybody who's joining. Uh, Re-advisor, Ari Advisor Dubai. Thank you. Mizam, you're a great guy. I appreciate it. Who doesn't want to hear that he's a great guy in the morning? Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. Sheikh Realtor joining, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you guys coming over here. Um, Ayman, thank you very much. Hi, Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Rahman, always Sheikh. Okay, guys, thank you very much. You guys got questions, please send them across. I'll be more than happy to answer, okay? So are we okay to, if we look at a few um, off-plan projects, okay? Very, very fast, very quickly. It's going to be super fast. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth, but I'll give you my opinion very quickly, okay? So uh, there's one called Shoba Reserve, okay? So just to let you give, give you a quick background on Shoba, the developer. They are the preeminent developers when it comes to quality. The way they manage or control quality is because they are backwards integrated. I don't like the word to use backward, but that's the economic term when a company that produces a property or any company that produces something also produces the raw materials or the equipment used in its production. So Shoa is one of those countries that not only has a construction and their own consulting company that manages the full project, but they make their own doors. They make their own windows, they make their own tile ceramics, or they purchase them from wherever they need to purchase themselves, as opposed to another developer that conceptualizes a project and then gives it to a third-party contracting company to build it from A to Z for them. Shoba does it themselves, which is why they are uh, producers of some of the highest quality projects in Dubai, okay? They generally call themselves they say builders to the palace makers because they worked in palaces in Oman, okay? Now, because they've established themselves as very high quality, their villas have appreciated previously that are in Mohammed bin Rashid city, which is close to downtown fairly well. So villas that they sold for 8 million now sell in the market for 11, 12, 13, so on and so forth, okay? They've taken a new area, a large swath of land inside Dubai land closer to where Global Village is, if you are familiar with this place, where IMG World of Adventures is, okay? They're building, um, uh, they are building villas there starting from 8 million going all the way up. I personally believe that location is going to start getting better and better and better. Arabian Ranches is right next door. Right now, if you go there, I was there. You can check one of my Instagram stories. Uh, and I was actually at the reserve, by the way. I knew that place is actually the reserve. I was actually, so in the morning, while I'm doing my five-minute morning walk in the desert, I'm actually close to a developer, so I was doing some reconnaissance for you guys. So I looked into the site and saw some groundbreaking work happening. Groundbreaking, not in groundbreaking, but they were breaking the ground. They were mobilizing, okay? So it's a little bit far, but it's, they're going to produce high-quality villas. It's very good for end users if you're looking to live there. Uh, very, very good. Is it close to Arabian Ranches 3, Mizam? Yes, it's close to Arabian Ranches 3, okay? Uh, thank you for coming on with a great topic indeed, and my name is Ramiz. Okay, Ramiz, nice to meet you. It's close to Raven Ranches 3. Okay, get in touch with us if you would like to purchase over there. Let's move on, okay? So I promise not to talk too much about this, but 
Mudon al Ranim, okay? Mudon al Ranim, this is one of those off plan projects with three and four bedroom townhouses, and they've come off the success of the original Mudon, okay? So there's three, three kinds of townhouses or villas in Mudon. They're by Dubai Holding, under which is Dubai Properties, okay? They're preeminent government developer. They know what they're doing. They've been delivering good properties and good, decent communities for a long time, right? Business Bay, where we're sitting right now, is done by Dubai, Dubai Properties, which is now under Dubai Holding. The first Mudon, which has Rahat, Naseem, uh, Al Salam, and a few others, were bigger four-bedroom townhouses, okay, and five-bedroom semi-detached or detached villas. They're large, they're 3,700 square feet, four bedrooms, they've got rooms which are big, plots that are big, but they also cost 3.6 million, okay? Then what they did is they launched, uh, Ramiz, I have answered that it is close to Arabian Ranches at three, yeah? Uh, the at Shoba Reserve that I'm talking about. Then the Dubai properties launched Arabella one, two, three, which were smaller townhouses between the ticket prices of one point, starting at 1.6 to up to 2 million. But these were smaller houses, which are still in a lot of demand when it comes to rental and a community to live in. Guys, listen, if you can afford a big house and live in luxury, good for you. Some people choose to live where they can live. The houses are small, but they're no longer, they're not like below, uh, below, um, they're not like below par. They're not like affordable houses. It's a good location, very good, okay? But they are smaller rooms, smaller footprints, smaller plots, beautifully done, very nice. Then Arabella 1, 2, 3 got handed over in 2018 to 22. They've now hand started, they've launched something called Mudon al Ranim. I think they're finished with this project now. This going to get handed over in the next two years. The first phase will get start getting handed over but they're the smaller, smaller townhouses. I think, in my opinion, there is a demand for bigger townhouses at 3.6 to 3.5, because just extra space, sometimes people like it. And I think Dubai properties under Dubai Holdings will bring them back, okay? Uh, Ramiz is asking, don't you think it's high price way higher than Arabian Ranches 3? No, uh, so you've got to understand uh, what you're buying and who you're buying from, right? So Raven Ranches 3, uh, first of all, you've got to go in and you've got to uh, compare the exact same size villa that you're going to be getting from Shoba Reserve in Arabian Ranches 3, okay? I don't think you're going to get the same sizes in uh, Arabian Ranches 3. Imar is known for delivering the best community, which they're going to in Arabian Ranches 3. Are they going to deliver the largest, most spacious rooms? Most likely not. Are they going to deliver to you the best, ultimate quality? It's going to be good quality. I'm not saying it's bad quality, but it's not going to be showbiz quality, okay? So you're paying a little bit of a premium for the extra space, for the extra quality that you're getting. Also, you've got to remember, Arabian Ranches 3 was launched like six years ago. So you can't compare six-year-old prices to current today's prices, which have to take into account inflation, such as oil prices, cement prices, cost of living prices, so on and so forth, yeah? C point isn't, I wish they bring that back. You are absolutely right at that. Oh yes, so real, real estate advisors talking about the bigger houses. Ah, I think you've got a good point. No Shah Ismail, thank you very much. Maria, thank you very much for joining. Uh, very, very good. Thank you advisor for that uh, message. I appreciate it. Straight Path has a question on YouTube. Uh, I should answer you on YouTube as well. Uh, looking forward for end users and working class people to get good villa and apartment options in prime locations in Dubai. That's a good point. For end users and working class people. See, I don't think that that's an impossibility because Dubai does give you that option, okay? Like, like you know, even today, Nishama has townhouses, okay, which are kind of, when I say affordable, then I'm saying that you can go and afford it out there, means like a 2 million or a 1.6 million, 1.7, you can get an Islamic mortgage involved and so on and so forth. The problem is not, in my opinion, with 
when you say working class, the issue is not are the properties available out there. The issue is that they're not taking their first few steps to starting to get onto the property ladder in the right way. So when you get onto the property ladder, uh, you know, there's no limits to it. Like God's going to bless you and you're going to come around and getting something. Um, another project, let's talk about Seapoint by Imar in Imar Beachfront. Look, they've just launched, there's two towers. Anything in Imar Beachfront generally does very well. But the handover on these is like way out there, 2027 or something. So you got to understand, in Imar Beachfront, where the place is so super hot today, and prime with all the infrastructure built, about a billion dollars worth of infrastructure built where the cruise terminal with the boats are stopping, Imar is going to charge you a super premium to buy into that project, which is fine. Just don't expect to flip these in the next one year, okay? So you buy, they expect that a three year capital appreciation is built in and just wait, right? So you're getting a great property in my opinion, Get into a two or a three bedroom with great views. If you can do that, you're going to be benefiting post three years. Post two years, you might get like some good appreciation. Okay, Imar Beachfront at today is a no brainer, even if it was not in 2018. Okay. Okay, so let's just continue down the road. Thank you very much for most people. Please also brief about recent launch project on Palm Jumeirah by Nakhil. There's a lot of projects, Ramiz, that have been launched in uh, Palm Jumeirah by Nakhil. Please remind me which one have they recently launched. Oh, yeah, I think they've launched recently. I've, I've just got the information coming in right now. They've kind of like, from the little bit that I saw, they've got everything in that project. So I'll wait for more information before I make any kind of information, uh, before I put information out there, okay? Uh, the Quayside in Business Bay by Ellington. Quayside in Business Bay, Ellington. Okay, listen. Ellington, as a developer, launched them back in 2015, and they've made a mark around design and quality, okay? So, I'm not going to say this, but while Shoba does ultimate quality, some people like their design, some people don't, okay? So it's about the substance. But Ellington comes in from a design perspective that we're going to add that Genesis Qua, a little bit like some excitement, right? So from that perspective, Ellington, we know they do very well from design and, uh, and quality. So there's two elements, right? The quality is good, which means the finish is good. They paid some workers some extra money. They chose a contracting company with good money. Yeah? The design element is there, but here's the thing, okay? With Ellington, you've got to remember, they've taken eight years to make their mark in the, uh, to make their mark in the, um, in the market. Eight years, right? So did they start off with the highest prices on the first projects? No, they did not. Can they charge you higher prices today? Yeah, maybe, yes, they can, right? They want to, right? So you're going to be paying a little bit of a premium because it's a business bay location and it is Ellington. But go in for the good options, okay? So avoid the ground floor, avoid the top floor. Go in for the two-bedroom and three-bedroom with good views, especially if they've got views of the canal, okay? Creek Waters at Dubai Creek by Imar. Look, Creek, Dubai Creek Harbor is super undervalued. It's going to be coming up super fast. The next three years is going to be Creek Harbor. You will see good capital appreciation, okay? It's one for the, it's a long horse, okay? Golf Grand, okay, let me check if there's any more questions. Guys, please, if you have any questions on YouTube or Instagram, please ask and I will be happy to answer, okay? So, real estate advisor to buy, they ask today or tomorrow, the recession is hitting hard in the US. Uh, Como Residence by Nakhil. Okay, let me get some more information on the Como Residence by Nakhil, and then I will get you more information, Ramiz, okay? Uh, so you're asking me about... Uh, Jaren, welcome. Thank you very much for joining. You're asking me about the recession. Guys, listen. Markets move in uh, cycles, okay? Uh, so we had... So let's let's go way back, okay? So let's allow in 2001. 2001, uh, when 9-11 happens, everything... Uh, we have the dot-com bubble, crash in 2000, 2001, 9-11 happens, markets crash, and then we've got seven to eight years of like mar markets bubbling, right? Extreme 
bubble is happening. M markets crash, then markets recover. We have like good years, another seven, eight years. I think it wasn't until the pandemic what we saw like where we saw like markets come to the absolute bottom. The 2020, 2020, 2021 year was the pandemic and then we saw markets coming up. We're in 2023. My personal opinion, there's a lot of talk about recession and a lot of people, I don't know whether it's about news making it more entertaining or whether it's about people who are holding positions which would benefit them from a recession, okay? So they talk about recession a lot, okay? How do we suggest that investors should safeguard themselves? At the end of the day, guys, listen, buy value, buy value, okay? I'll give you a very simple example. I don't want to get super complicated. Somebody bought a townhouse in Mira Oasis or Al Reem, which is a smaller community by Emar. It's not super attractive, not super glamorous, but he bought a townhouse, which was a single row facing the park which is like for a family, an amazing, amazing place to live. Guess what happened during the pandemic and post pandemic? His tenants never wanted to move out, never asked him for a discount. And also when he rented it out, he rented it at a premium, okay guys? So the best thing to do is buy properties. I'm not gonna say properties which are recession proof, analyze your risk, buy value, and then stay in it for the long term. If even a recession comes, which, you know, it's the world markets do what they do, you st still operate on a principle of providing value to your clients and customers. You should operate on a principle of buying value from the market and you're going to be okay. Like, you know, if I was holding Apple stock today and I know Apple's making great products and provides value, right? Like phones good. I think they're trying to produce a car and so on and so forth. And there was a recession and Apple stock went down. Should I sell the stock? I keep holding. I just wait. Just a minute for the long game, right? So I'm all right. All right. So I've got, how do you, how do you get to buy a property before it's launched? Okay. Nicholas Uzati, get in touch with us. Guys, I have made a video on how to buy off-plan properties. Okay. Uh, Anu. These videos are uh, how the LOI and all of that works, okay? Here's the thing. So let me answer Nicholas, okay? You can link them. Find the videos and you'll be able to link them. It's uh, um, off plan, LOI, or understanding how to buy off plan. You'll, you'll find the videos, just you can link it over there. Watch those videos. They actually explain to you how a super hot off plan property works, okay? So Nicholas, just explain how you what exactly you meant are you do you mean something that's super super hot how do you buy it before it's launched it's pretty simple guys there is a game that the developers play okay they will tell you that it's pre-launch sometimes it's genuinely pre-launch sometimes it's not a genuine pre-launch okay it's uh, they just call it pre-launch just to create that mo that uh, that amazing atmosphere of uh, you know fear of missing out however Sometimes it's a genuine pre-launch, okay, from a developer, let's say like Emar, uh, which is launching a project in Emar Beachfront, which again, Emar Beachfront is a great project. It's in demand. You can expect that anything get, that gets launched at this present time is getting sold within a, a few hours or a few days, guys. Listen, now if you want to absolutely get into this launch situation, what happens is the developer allows you to put in an expression of interest or a letter of a LOI or EOI, a letter of interest. Generally, it's done with a deposit. Sometimes, it depends on how hot the market is, okay? If the market is not super hot, they will ask you to not just sign the document and give it to them. Sometimes if it's super hot, they will ask you to put a actual physical check or transfer money to them with the condition that they will return this money back to you if you don't get the assigned unit. Once the launch or the pre-launch happens, a broker will call you and they will literally give you like a minute to decide if it's a property that you want to buy, which means that before that, you should have studied all the flow plans, know exactly if you want to buy this or not. I personally think that when the market's super, super hot, buying in a launch uh, that carries its own risk, so you need an advisor guiding you to making sure either if it's from the developer's advisory side 
Because remember, the developers, advisors, and the salespeople are going to sell everything. Right? They're going to sell the good view, the bad view, the nice, and, and they're going to convince you that everything's good. But you need somebody on board to help you guide through the process, okay? Uh, Nicholas, let me know if I've answered your question. And then if you actually say yes to them on the phone, they will bank your check, and then they'll put you through the booking process, okay? Uh, but there is a video on this that I've made uh, two years ago. You should watch that video. Mocho17, which, which, which you think are the best offline project at the moment to invest in? There is no one offline project which is the best to invest in. As I told you, Mar Beachfront is great, but you're going to wait three years. Everybody carries a different profile when they come to us to invest. We look at what you're looking at and what you're aiming at to be able to make the best of the scenario, and then we customize what is the best project for you, okay? All right. Everybody else who's joining, uh, Anil Bharani, thank you very much. Olavan, Duro Jaya Habib, thanks for coming on. It's me, Batsha, Lena Vix, thank you for joining. Uh, Om Tiwari, hey Om, how are you? Om Tiwari again, how are you doing, man? All right, okay. Let's go back to other offline projects. Okay, Creek Beach. We've got, okay, so we've got Golf Grand by Emar. Um, this is in Dubai Hills Estate. Again, Dubai Hills Estate property, the project that they launched in 2014-15 today. Uh, thanks for the hearts. Oh, project that they launched in 2014-15 today <laughs> in 2023 after eight years. What does Dubai Hills have, right? Has a mall as one of the largest residential community parks, as a full mall, like you, that mall can actually compete with one of the largest malls like Merdha City Center or Mall of the Emirates. Even though I've not been there many times, but the mall is really like, it's just one and a half years old now. Uh, full park, residential park, full golf course with a golf club. A hospital full hospital like you can literally like uh, I think it's a full hospital schools nearby and then the whole community is kind of like self encompassed it also has a petrol pump inside the community a lot of people hey Fat, salam alaikum how are you Fat Siddiqui food geek uh, a lot of people don't probably know about this but So not that video, I know buying offline from a new developer pros and cons, not that video. There's another video. Check. We'll, we'll link it later on as well. All right, good. So what am I saying about this, guys? What am I saying? Okay, so Dubai Hills, Golf Grand. No brainer. It's going to be good. It's going to be expensive. It's not going to be cheap. South Bay in Dubai South. Uh, Dubai South is a place that's coming up. I think next two years, you're going to see tons of people move to Dubai South and Emar South because I started talking to people who were telling me, hey, they're going to go and live in Dubai South. And then when I say, hey, is it a little bit far for you? And they're like, no, we like that. We're okay with that because, you know, you get a little bit more space for the amount of money that you're paying as a tenant. You, it's okay for you to pay the extra amount of money to be able to commute into Dubai for 30 to 40 minutes. It's going to happen. The next two years, it's, uh, you will see that people will start living there which means that Dubai South, Imar South is going to be coming up. Uh, which means getting in there now, uh, well, like Islam Fahad, getting in there now it would be good. It is a five to seven year window of prices going up, but you're going to start seeing in two years, people are going to start living there as a, uh, hey, yeah, they like living there and they don't mind the 40 minutes drive into Dubai. Siddhartha Creek Beach, Creek Beach, another undervalued place. Savannah in Creek Beach, Undervalued. Sanctuary by Ellington. Autographed by J in Jumeirah Village Circle. Jumeirah Village Circle is a great location. The development uh, is a little bit lacking, so you've got to really think about that, okay? Uh, overall development's a little bit lacking. The Mac uh, Bay by Cavalli. Again, very good. I think this is in Business Bay. The Mac is a decent developer. They've delivered a lot. Elvira in uh, Imar. Jury Hills and Jumeirah Golf Estates. Okay, Jumeirah Golf Estates is another very good place. Just remember one thing, that you're always paying a premium in Jumeirah Golf Estates. It's a premium community, okay? So villas and townhouses pay a yearly membership fee for the golf course. So if you're okay with paying that, 
uh, it's I think 11, 12,000 dirhams. Elora, the valley, again, time to get into the valley is now, but it's going to take three to four years before prices start going up, that's my opinion only. Anya and Arabian Raj is three. Good. Cres Grande by Shoba. Uh, Bingati Corner by JVC. So Bingati is a classic developer that does good developments. And if you get in a, like with Bingati, go, go in and negotiate. Get discounts by them, okay? So that you can really, really get a great price. Shoba Marina by Shoba in Dubai Marina uh, or close to Imar Beachfront. This project is pretty much sold out. But here's the thing. If you can't afford an MR beachfront, go over here. Uh, you might be able to do very well. What's the future? Uh, so you might be able to do very well. There will be canceled units. If you want to buy in Shoba Marina, make friends with a uh, developer, make friends with us, pay us our fee, work with us. We'll get you something amazing over there, right, guys? So there's a lot of other projects that I'm not going to continue talking about these projects. Should we move on to questions, guys? Is that okay? Okay, guys, uh, let's move on to questions that I have from some of the viewers, and I will make life, it will make life very, very easy. Axie K, thank you for joining. Dubai with Rahul, thanks very much for joining. Hello, Rahul. Uh, what's the future plan for Jabal Ali Palm? Great question. I don't know. Uh, there is somebody that I should be asking about. Uh, he's an old friend of mine, focuses on the Palm Jumeirah. He might know. But I think the time is ripe, perhaps, for Palm Jabal Ali to be launched. Uh, what kind of grand plan they're going to launch, I'm not sure. Just keep in view that Palm Jumeirah took about 20 to 23 years for it to come into its current position right now. So if you're going to go invest in Palm Jabal Ali, it's going to be a long game. Okay, guys, it's not a short game. Like, you invest and you make a lot of money immediately. All right, guys? All right, cool. Let's come to questions. So I have a question from Thais. Hi, Father, I have a question. So I'm a French lawyer educated in the U.S., so clearly an educated person, probably speaks very good English because you got educated in the U.S. I'm seeking a real estate agent position in Dubai. I've applied to positions on LinkedIn. My question is, how do I reckon an average successful real estate company? Considering I have zero sales experience, I have an interview. They've, she's mentioned the name of a company. I won't mention the name of the company. How do I know the agency is actually legit? Okay, so very simple. Go to something called the Dubai Rest app. R for Romeo, E for Echo, S for Sierra, T for Tango. R-E-S-T, REST app. It's there on, I on the Apple Store, on the Android Store, and so on and so forth. Okay, So just ask for, uh, just go download the REST app. Look for that company on the REST app. Look for the number of brokers they have registered, which means that they are re uh, real estate regulatory agency certified. Look for their transactions that they've done. Look for their trade license. Or it will show you how long the company's been operating and the grading that they have. Pretty simple, pretty easy for you to know. One of the things that I would do if they really want you to come and work for them, talk to somebody who's a senior manager and say, look, I'd love to talk to one of your registered agents, right? So obviously you've got the REST app here. You'll be able to see, actually, if they don't allow you to do that, you can even pick up the phone and call one of the agents because agent mobile numbers will sometimes be there. But I suggest you talk to them and say, I'd like to speak to one of your agents just so know, I know who I'm joining, okay? And that makes your life easy. So you know, the REST app will show you when the office was established, how many agents are working there right now, the Dubai government gives the agency a rating. Don't rely on that rating alone because all agencies work differently. It's the rating is a new thing. You will see that some agencies have a gold rating, but perhaps you're not going to be a good fit over there because they're either very cutthroat or whatever the case is. I don't know about this, okay? But look at that and then ask them that you'd like to speak to one of, your, one of their agents. Talk to the agent for 15 minutes. You are a lawyer. You will be able to figure out pretty fast, okay? Wall choices to join. Uh, there is one thing, though. Sometimes people, ah, uh, you're a lawyer. Perhaps you overthink things, right? I'm just joking. Perhaps you don't. Don't overthink things. A lot of people want to make that perfect move, guys. Like, there is no perfect move, right? How many people move to Dubai and they find a job and everything's perfect? 80%. 20% never move on in Dubai, they go away to other countries, right? 
So for you as well, the first company might not be the first company, might not be the best. Maybe it'll be company number two and company number three. A lot of people put too much pressure on themselves that they should make the right decision the first time around. Relax. When buying off plan, why there is delay from developer to provide a code? Okay. So when you're buying off plan, this is what happens. You do a booking form, you do a sales and purchase agreement, and then you do something called the Akud, which is the government registration. Guys, listen, developers will, re will upload your documents to the government department's registered website, and they have only got the access to this. And then there's somebody physically checking and issuing those. I think there's no physical checking, but there's somebody doing that from that side, and the Akuds get, uh, get coming to you, right? Just you guys have to understand something, guys. Dubai is going through uh, a lot of sales at breakneck speed. So these delays sometimes are because just the volume of transactions that are happening. Otherwise, you can always email the developer and ask them why or what's going on, and they will give you an answer, okay? Okay, thank you very much for joining. Samir, Mimu Ayan joined, thank you. Mizan, is there a certain academic qualification required to get a reader license for an individual? for an individual real estate agent. Yes, you've got to do the real estate regulatory uh, brokerage course. Uh, it's available, you pay for it. I think it's two to 3,000 there. Ali Verk 920 joined, thank you very much. Good to see you. All right, let's take another question. Carol Jakela, what's up, Fan? Nice to meet you. I, like, I really like your video on three different investment strategies you could adopt in real estate. I can't help but see the positive impact the information you shared here has on a bunch of people. Thank you, Carol, I appreciate your comments, uh, your words of encouragement as well. I generally think your comment content is pretty damn good. Okay, thank you very much. There is a question here, guys, but I do like to read this. And seeing it made me curious about something, so if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you directly, what's the biggest roadblock that prevents most investors from succeeding in real estate? I did actually read this question before, and I thought about what is the biggest before my laptop goes eyes away. What is the biggest um, thing? Okay, so I talked about this. I see another question on YouTube. I'll come to it. Just give me a second, please, guys. In my opinion, the biggest roadblock is not having the right mindset to succeed in real estate, okay? So people don't have the right mindset, which means that they don't plan and then they don't take any action. Uh, a lot of people think, like, if you start out in real estate and stick with it, in my personal opinion, if you make 10 investments, let's say over five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, here's how it's going to perform. Out of 10 investments, five are going to perhaps be regular Joe's, average investments. Three are going to be absolute home runs, which are like you invested and you made 50% profit over one year or two years, three years. While your average investments are doing decent, good, let's say good to average, three are going to be absolute gold runs and two are going to be perhaps loss makers. What happens with people? Let's say I'm giving you an average of 10. People do that first investment and stop. They think it's not for me, but perhaps if they lost money, right? You've got to stay in the game for you to reach that 10. But it all boils down to your mindset. There's people who start and they think, okay, I'm going to continue the path. I will invest 10. If it takes me 10 years, so what? You will have some winners. It's very simple, right? There's no way that you don't attempt something 10 times and you don't have winners. People stop at attempt number five or attempt number six. You've got to continue. It comes down to the mindset. Now, if you've got that mindset to start and you make a plan and then take action, you're going to be okay. So in my personal opinion, and this is my opinion today, it's just that people don't take that energy coming from a positive mindset to stay the course and continue. I'll give you an, another simple example. If you want to move to Dubai, all you need to do is actually take a trip to Dubai. It could be a friendly trip, a touristic trip, or have a dream, right? And think maybe you don't even need to move to Dubai. But let's say if you have a dream to work in Dubai, or have a dream to work in New York, and it's not happening, take a trip down there. Go down there and meet people, interview with people. 
you're going to successfully find yourself moving to Dubai or to New York. Perhaps the first job, you might ask me, how do I succeed finding the best job in Dubai? Perhaps the first job is not going to make it or cut it. Perhaps it's just for you to start out. But if you continue year two, year three, year four, you will succeed, right? Okay. AJ asking me, guys, good question. If you guys don't mind. Caffeine. Not that I endorse caffeine. AJ, assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Kindly suggest a good offline project in Sharjah. I'm shifting to UAE this month. Give me suggestions on this topic. Look for good offline projects in Al Marjan Island. I don't know those areas very well, but if you need somebody who's really, really, really good, you can engage us. We do have a reserve service agency fee that, that, that you must pay to start working with us. But let's say, AJ, you do go to Sharjah, okay? Here's what I suggest you should be doing, okay? There are a few government developers. I think Arada is one of them. Try to see one of their developments. Okay, governments generally are backed by the government. I'm not saying it's 100% foolproof. My first two property investments in Dubai in 2008 were with government developers, and we did, we did, anyways, that's a story for another time, okay? We lost money in one, and the other one we did not actually make money. But anyways, it's fine, it happens. But I suggest you go with the development developer, government developer. The other thing is, I suggest you do a lot of due diligence. Look at what they're developing. Look at what they're doing, right? On Al Marjan Island, which is a good location, closer to Dubai, uh, you could buy there, or you could buy in one of the outskirts because those outskirts are going to be performing very well as well. Here's the diddlyo. Here's the deal. Any developer you go and check, go and check their previous construction that they've done. Okay, guys, if they've done really good development previously, you're going to be okay, okay? So look at previous development before you commit to the new development. Arada, I think, is pretty good. What's the potential of holiday homes management in Dubai? How does your company work on that? So we have a holiday homes division that's coming up, but previously what we've done is we outsourced to two partners of ours who are really, really good. They're managing 500 plus properties. They know what they're doing. What is the future for holiday homes in Dubai? I think it's a very fragmented uh, industry at the moment, and there's going to be mergers and acquisitions. I think it's a challenging opportunity, but one worth getting into, but for the long run, okay? These companies that are managing 500, company, 500 properties have about 400 staff. So, which is like a very large number, okay? It's like kind of like running a five-star hotel with 500 rooms, like it's just insane. So I've got something, much, must chill life. Hey, Fad. Hey, Fad, very generous of you to put this and other amazing content. Are you currently hiring agents? We are, we've got two positions. So agents or advisors, both are different. There is a WhatsApp number, reach out. There is a WhatsApp number over there. You can put, uh, uh, yeah, the, the WhatsApp number over there. You can reach out to them. Uh, and then they can actually, or you can put Deborah's number as well. All right, okay, guys. Yes, I'll come back to your question. Just give me a moment. Let me answer this question. Patrick, Patrick Griffin. Good afternoon, Fad. Hope you're having a great day so far. My name is Patrick Griffin. I'm a fitness professional here in Dubai. Have you been in the health? have been in the health and fitness industry for about 10 years now, and I'm looking for a complete career change, okay? First things first, right? When somebody's a fitness professional operating in Dubai and has been in the industry for 10 years, right? Obviously, off the bat, it tells me you're disciplined. Uh, there are some fitness professionals who, when you look at them, don't you don't think that they're fitness professionals, but that's like very rare. Uh, huh, Akilesh? Most fitness professionals, when you look at them, they look like they're really fitness professionals, which means that you lead a disciplined life. Uh, perhaps you're looking for a career change because perhaps the industry is boring you. Perhaps you want to make more money, so on and so forth. Great. No problem. Let's look at what else he has to say, okay? But I like off the bat, you speak as if somebody who leads a disciplined life. So if you're looking to come into real estate, you're going to need discipline. I love your YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And I've recently seen your How to Get Started in Real Estate episode. You mentioned it's important to find a good company that will support you through the process. Absolutely true, right? So a good company 
would support you through the process of your first six months. Means not just financially, but they will actually provide you the necessary training, the necessary camaraderie, the necessary mentorship for you to grow in the industry, right? Think about it, right? If a young fitness professional came to you today with your 10 years of experience, there's a lot that you would be able to teach him. But if you don't want to teach him, he's going to be fending off for himself, right? Do you have any recommendations on which companies specifically are more catered towards new people just starting out? Okay. If you could point me in the right direction, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, guys, I don't have specific companies that I can guide you towards. Why? Because every single company, as you would ag agree, just like a fitness professional, everybody has their good, their bad, and their ugly. Okay, so there's pros and cons. You've got to find a company that fits with you. Okay, which fits with you. What does that mean? How does this work? You've got to go and meet them. The big boys, generally speaking, okay, so FAB, DNB, Unique Properties, uh, there's a few other names, Exclusive Links. Uh, they're not big, big, big in agent numbers, but they've, they, they've been there for a long time in the market, okay? Generally speaking, uh, the Springfield, uh, these guys, they've, they've, they've had a lot of tough experiences hiring young agents or agents with no Dubai real estate experience who are trying to make it big but have no Dubai real estate experience, so they crash and burn in the first one year. So the big boys generally have very stringent requirements now. They've been operating in the industry for the last 10 years, five years, and they're looking for real estate experience. That doesn't mean that you can't get hired, right? You've got to break through the door. I'll put your, don't break through the door because you're a fitness professional. You've got to put your leg through the door, okay? So now, if you put your leg through the door, what's going to happen is, you're going to have that opportunity to be able to say to them, listen, this is me. You're going to stand up and you're going to say, look at me, I'm a good person. I can actually provide value to the clients. I'm a quick learner. And as I said, because you are a fitness professional, what's going to happen is they're going to be able to see that you've got that necessary discipline that generally is required for anybody to succeed in anything in life, right? Sorry guys, I was just going through the latest questions. Welcome to all the people who have joined. A star meets star. Okay, that must be you and me. Lama Sani. Lama Sani. Hi, Amro. How are you? I am not Amro, but Amro is one of our advisors, okay? So now here's the deal. So these, com these companies will not look to hire you because they will want to have your experience, but you've got to get your foot through the door and try to go in for an interview and explain to them why you can support yourself for six months, why you can be good in, the in this industry, and then look for a good mentorship program. Tell them, ask them, like, are you just going to put me on my own? Is there something that I can, Ali Asghar, saying, Assalamu Alaikum, how you doing, brother? So ask them, is there somebody who's going to be helping me through the process, right? You guys need that support. The more I do, the more I learn. And then ask them for mentor mentorship, okay? So uh, there was a question in here. Do you prefer leasing the apartment furnished or non-furnished and why? Both work and it depends. What kind of furniture are you going to be putting? Like, look, guys, I'll tell you. Uh, back in the day in Dubai, when you said the apartment's furnished, this is what used to happen. The landlords were living in their own apartment, had used furniture for the last five years. They decided to leave. The agent said, leave the furniture here, which looks, sometimes, sorry to say this, but ugly, doesn't look nice. It's not brand new. And then they advertise it as furnished apartment. Now, at the lower end of the market, perhaps people will accept it, but at the middle to high end, Nobody wants somebody's used furniture that is really bad, bad in, ba in bad shape. So that is out of the window. So if you've just bought a property that has old furniture, listen, don't rent it out furnished. People aren't, aren't going to appreciate that. Nobody likes that kind of furniture. If you're going to put in good hotel-grade furniture made from a factory, but it's going to last beyond the tenant and it looks good. Because you got to remember, people who are looking for furnished options are willing to pay that extra money. 
They don't want to go to IKEA and buy the furniture because they don't have the time. So you've got to give good furniture. If, you've got, if, you, if you have that and you're willing to do that, it's okay. If it's re it doesn't have to be expensive furniture. It should just be nice, neat, and clean. A lot of people have old furniture that's run down, not nice, not, ni not neat, not clean. I don't even mind if you have IKEA furniture, but if it's an interior designer, put it together in a nice way, you're going to be okay. So if that is the case, furnish is good. You can actually charge a little bit of a premium, get better tenants in and so on and so forth. Can you make a video on Arabian Ranches 3 and Valley? Uh, yes, we can. Nishan, this is a question. They're two different, completely different, different, different uh, things. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll look at our question come through on YouTube. Um, Raymond Ranches 3 is a community that's coming into, into its own. Villas are now selling at premiums. You can get into that community even now. It's not at the top of their premiums. But I would suggest be careful if you're buying an Arabian Ranches. If you're paying a high premium, you're going to be suffering later, okay? Valley, completely different product, different area. It's going to take two to three years before that place starts really making a big mark. But it's good to get in now because the prices are low, okay? Question from here, AJ. I have a question. What is it, your advice to someone coming to Dubai and wants to invest in real estate as side investment with a reasonable budget? What should be, he invest in studio or one bed or two bed apartment? Again, look, AJ, it depends on what's your budget, how much money you have, what's your investment horizon, how long do you want to hold it, what kind of property are you willing to get into, do you want rental income immediately, do you want capital depreciation, do you want liquidity, which means selling the property very, very fast, what kind of risk tolerance do you have, are you super young, are you very old, do you want to be able to be exposed to some risk, because the larger the risk, the larger the reward which means more capital appreciation. So when you sit down with a strategic advisor from one of my teams, you can get into it, rental income, I see it, then they would consider multiple different options. Now, again, my personal opinion, two beds are gonna do very well because you put a family in, they live there for minimum three years, two years, four years, you have very little time on losing rent because each time a family or a tenant leaves, you lose at least one month of rental income, which could be actually 5% of your total rental income, right? Studios is what perhaps you could afford. Studios are always going to see churn. So expect a tenant not to stay more than two years in a studio, right? So when you're looking at rental income and you look at the overall trend and you want to say, hey, Fad, five years down the line, I want to look back and I want to say that I got good rental income averaging at 8% and not 6% then you've got to consider that the extra waiting time or the vacant period on studios is going to lead into that. Okay, guys? Last question, and then we say goodbye. Is that okay? Yeah? Is that okay with you guys? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so, Maksudov Abdul Bosit. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Fad. Wa alaikum assalam, rahmatullah. Very useful video. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, he's made a comment on, his, on my YouTube video. But I want to ask you about Crypto Mortgage Company, which is functioning under Demac Properties. As a Muslim, can I work in this company or it's not allowed due to Islamic law? Thanks. So my answer to you is going to be prefaced with something else, which is that, as you know, I'm not an Islamic scholar, right? I do carry a beard, but I'm not an Islamic scholar, which means that I can't give you a conclusive Islamic answer that is going to satisfy you. Seek this answer from either an online Islamic scholar who knows this or in person seek out one of those who can give you a proper, proper, proper answer, okay? I can't give you an answer on this. I'm not an Islamic scholar, guys, okay? Uh, ask me real estate questions. Tomorrow, if you ask me other Islamic questions, I still won't be able to answer, okay, guys? Just for those who are not Muslim and why this person asked this question is because in Islam, interest is considered to be not permissible. Mortgages generally are based on the principle of interest that you pay back on the person who lent you the uh, amount. But there are Islamic companies that provide an Islamic mortgage because the way they do it is uh, allowed. But I do not have enough information about this crypto mortgage company uh, to be able to give you any advice on this Islamically. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for everybody, everybody, everybody who's joined. Oh, guys, listen, there I did do a podcast 
on uh, how to set up a company in Dubai, uh, whether it's a free zone, freehold, Dubai land apartment company, check it out. I think you're going to uh, find it quite useful, okay? It's a, it's a long podcast with an expert who's been doing this for six years plus, okay? Check it out. All right, guys, listen, there's no more questions now. Thank you, everybody who joined. Uh, please, my question about monthly target, I mean. Okay, what does this say? Monthly target. Yes, I'll answer your question, but I have no idea what you what you mean, okay? Yes, camel. Monthly target. Do you prefer leasing the apartment furnished or non-furnished and why? Yes, I already answered that. Thanks a lot. Monthly target, I mean. I think. I think I understand what you were meaning. Please, my question about, I don't know which one you're referring to. Okay, maybe he's no longer there. So I say goodbye to you all, uh, Ilyas. Yes, Kamal, you can always put it in the comment section, yeah? And I'll answer it maybe perhaps on the next live. So guys, there's a, don't forget, there is a link below. If you want to work with me, you can actually hit it, click it. There is a service fee that's involved in starting to work with me. Uh, at the same time, uh, comments and questions I take up, I answer them, okay? Don't forget, put them down there. I will take them up on the live sessions and I will answer them. Last but not the least, like, subscribe, and bell icon. All right, ciao for now, guys.